Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're doing a reading for Sign of Sagittarius, and keep in mind that this will not resonate for every Sagittarius. If you like a personal reading, it's going to be the first link in the description down below. Repeat that first link in the description down below for a personal reading. You can also find a bunch of other things there in the description. You can find my Etsy shop, which has my tarot and my oracle cards on there. Holographic stickers, as well as a mini holographic version of my oracle cards. A bunch of other things on there as well. Um, all that's in the description down below on my Etsy shop. You can also find my shirt store, my website, different social media platforms I'm on, as well as Patreon. All that's in the description down below. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, feel free to do so. I do appreciate donations here. So Sagittarius, let's see what Spirit has in store for yourself. So we have the Tree of Life, number four. We have Bast, Anubis, and Osiris. 17 with Sothis. Star Consciousness, Generosity. Number 25, the Crested Ibis. Sacred Archetypal Element of Air. Number 5 with the Sphinx. Divine Messenger, Earth Altar, Cosmic Library. Number five with higher love and wisdom, Hathor set in watch it. Number eighteen Kansu Lunar Divine Timing Blood Mysteries. Number ten with Kepura. Cycles of Change Planetary Guardian Spiral Dancer. Number six Right Timing and Direction South is Kansu Amun Ra. Okay, Sagittarius, we're going to have a look at your cards here. I think we're starting with the Sphinx first. In here, it says the Sphinx has mystified the world for thousands of years in recent re research suggested is far older than initially thought. This deity is carved from one giant protrusion of bedrock grounded in the heart of Egypt. The Phoenix has a is a divine messenger, a repository of cosmic akashic or spiritually informed wisdom. While theories abound about the great knowledge hidden under the Sphinx, in actuality this being contains information himself. He or she is a cosmic library, the very granite of the Sphinx being holds and retains far more knowledge than far more than the knowledge of adepts who did the carving indeed. The Sphinx function as a medium between us and the vast intelligent source in the stars. This mystery mysterious one transmits messages from our ancient ancestors to those who are ready to receive them. When you draw this card, we suggest that you bring your question directly to the Sphinx. Stop, open your heart, and listen. Take some time to prepare yourself by doing heart breath as you meditate on the ignamic deity. Listen for how the Sphinx informs you. You experience a download from the cosmic library of the ancient future memory from your DNA and starseed origins. Don't rush this process. This is an opportunity for you to connect with the Akashic Records. We're talking about the Akashic Records here, Sagittarius. We're talking about that of starseeds and all that sort of stuff. Which hold the inner map of your life and your potential future. As you develop your relationship with the Sphinx, you strengthen your capacities to open to guidance and fully receive it. This is not only for true divine guidance. This divine messenger can also direct you to other allies on the Earth plane who will assist you in your ongoing quest. If you feel called to vast knowledge beyond time and space, pay close attention when you connect with this magnificent Earth Altar Guardian of Stellar Mysteries. It is Sagittarius. Connecting with the Sphinx here. Connecting with the Kashuk Records. Going back to your Starseed Origins. Connecting with this here, Sagittarius, so that you can be guided, so that you are open. Open your heart so that you can be guided, Sagittarius. 
What's the next one? Just this. Capera is known as becoming one, the ancient scarab beetle who pushes the solar orb above the horizon at dawn. The scarab represents the gentle rays of the morning sun and is closely associated with creation and resurrection. Capera is a loyal guardian and protector of the planet Earth and all her creatures. In tune with the cycles of life in the cosmos, Capera ceaselessly works to bring forth necessary changes that allow creation to keep moving forward. As a spiral dancer who filters and transmits the powerful stellar and cosmic forces that radiate onto our planet into all of Earth's creatures. Capera mitigates these things while holding the balance of time and turning of the ages in his feet. If you have drawn this card, it is time to increase your awareness to the more subtle things that are influencing you. You are encoding the mystery teachings of the spiral dance and the nature of change. And Capera is there to protect and support you during this quickening. It is through the insert, insert, insertion of Capera that you are able to handle the things that are moving toward you at any given moment, especially if you move off the line near path into deeper relationship with the natural cycles of creation. With the heightened awareness that Capera offers, you can become a co-creator of your universe. You are awakening to how transformation happens and being prepared for the next level of higher consciousness. If your situation requires protection, feel Capera surround you and unfold you. Especially when you find yourself in a physically or emotional toxic environment, because Capera is closely aligned with the transits and alignments of the planets and stars, this might be a good time to consult a seasoned astrologer to invest in and explore your current connection to your personal astrological chart. Okay, Sagittarius, that is your awakening here. Okay, you're changing. You're becoming more aware, Sagittarius. You're becoming more aware of the divine here. You're becoming more aware of the messages here. You, you're like waking up more and more spiritually. Okay, you have this with you. You're going to be able to really create in your world. You're going to be able to like really manifest very strongly here, Sagittarius. So this is the stellar manifestation of the High Priestess. She is a pure channel for divine love and wisdom. Sothis is also Sirius, the dog star, which is the brightest star in the sky. Sothis follows her husband on, into the underworld when it disappears from the view for 70 days. The number of days for the funerary rites in ancient Egypt, she appears again, rising from the eastern sky. After her sojourn in the underworld, her presence throughout the coming in into inundation. The new year in the ancient calendar of Egypt. As Sothis rises from the night sky, she pours forth her spiritual essence, her stellar, and her compassionate wisdom upon all beings. Through her willingness to offer us these precious gifts and her guidance, we are elevated to a greater understanding of our own soul's purpose and the reasons we are here on Earth at this time. Sothis is the star of humanity, calling forth the best in each of us and inspiring us into our greater selves and offer our own unique gifts back to the world. Sothis is the queen of the sky. If you pull this card, you are being asked to embody your star consciousness. The star of your being is rising. Use this as an opportunity to be seen in the world and to emerge to a conscious as a conscious teacher of something your life has taught you. You have something wonderful to share. If you find yourself having an underworld experience, you can be sure that you will rise once again when the time is right and the cycle is completed. Instead of despairing, you have the opportunity to express your gratitude for all that you have learned on your journey. Be as Sothis, as generous in, as generous light in the darkness. As Sothis showers her gifts upon our planet, open to receive her bounty. At the same time, realize that you have equally abundant gifts to share with other Sagittarius. So you have completed a cycle here. You're out of that darkness here okay you're rising up you're you becoming more knowledgeable here rising your vibration and now it's time to share that with others Sagittarius number 18 it says Kansu is a lunar god who appears with many faces as 
the phases of the moon. Like the moon, he controls the tides and influences the weather. He is closely linked with Thoth, and like Thoth, is seen as both the Ibis and the Baboon. Known as the Wanderer, he is a protector of travelers and a measure of time. Kansu brings spiritual nourishment to our bodies and our souls. He knows the exact time in which we are ready to receive communion and eat the flesh of the gods so that we may become as one of them. Kansu works on our behalf to fertilize our minds and hearts with seeds of our own divinity. He engages the power of the moon to bring forth the healing that reigns, that cleanse our old belief systems, and he renews our DNA at a cellular level. He governs the tides of the oceans and our human emotions. Kansu is a great healer, said to be able to exercise demons. He does this by honoring, feasting, and celebrating the diseases, diseases and they happily go away. If you've chosen this card, the time is now to move forward in some situation that you've been hesitant about. This is also a favorable time for travel. Whatever movement is being called for, you may want to harness the power of ritual. Create a communion ceremony and honor the divine being you are. Acknowledge the journey you have been you have completed that has prepared you for the new phase you're entering. You can do this spiritually or bring it into the physical plane by setting up an altar with food that represents the body of earth and drink that represents the blood of the divine nature. If you are in need of healing, honor the source of your disease, injury, or situation for the teaching it has brought you. Have you taken holy sacraments? Sagittarius, see that you've completed a cycle. You're on to the next. The next is you really ascending here. You being able to co-create. You being able to manifest things just like that. Sagittarius, okay? And it's also talking about setting up of like an altar. The offerings of food. Twenty-five. The sacred crested ibis, known as known to the ancient Egyptians as the ark bird, is associated with the element of air and with thought as he relates to the cosmic mysteries. The crested ibis is, in essence, the phoenix rising from the fire. It speaks not only of rebirth, but also of clear thinking that gives you the understanding of your journey. This beautiful bird is a powerful symbol of the ability to conceive of a resulting creation in advance of its actual of its actualization. It refers to perceived preconceived idea and the goal, both of which are contained in the mind. The domain of of the element of air includes communication, language, and architecture. Whatever. It is through the air that we speak the words of power, and it is by making sound and music, toning, chanting, singing, speaking, laughing, and breathing that we express the element of air. Through our connection with air, we find sound within ourselves and communicate directly from the throat. Aesthetics, including beauty and pleasure, also exist in the domain of air. When this card comes up in your reading, it's time to look at how to express yourself especially in your communication with others. You have a valuable ally in the sacred crested ibis. When you meditate on this card, you will feel your consciousness rise as you are uplifted to a higher perspective, from which you can see whatever situation or question you brought in a new way. Use this perspective for clarity and thoughtfulness in your thinking and speaking. Drawing this card can also mean that it is time to lighten up. Air will assist you to experience and express wisdom with joy in a light heart so you can appreciate the humor and playfulness all around you. Air is your ally. Breathe deeply, free yourself, experience awe, then express your gratitude with exuberance. Okay, Sagittarius, this is telling you, like, really raising your vibration here, meditating, you know, becoming more clear, Sagittarius. Okay, expressing yourself more and, and lightening up a little bit more. Okay? This is this new phase that you're on. This is this journey that you're on. Four, five, and six. The tree of life. It says best awakens Anubis. Anubis is holy longing. The fruits from the sacred tree of life. Anubis hangs in anticipation, preparing to meet his father in the depths of the waters of the dreaming world. Osiris awaits Anubis' surrender into his watery embrace so that renewal and rebirth can result. 
what, are, what do you want to discover and or renew? When you pull this card, it's time to stop and consider the concept of surrender. Through your ability to find stillness in a meditative state, you'll be able to re recognize how in your everyday journey, you're engaged with this shamanic rite of passage of surrender, death and renewal, and regeneration. Look for the beauty that is an available result. Okay, Sagittarius. Once again, we're talking about that of meditating. What are you trying to discover and what are you trying to renew? What are you trying to bring into this world here, Sagittarius? And it's also telling you to kind of like flow a little bit more. Surrendering. So we have the magic of Hathor's unconditional love prepares us to meet our shadow selves. Set as the trickster shows us our shadow and clears the pathway for us each to receive which has great awakening and infusion of life force. When you draw this card, engage with these nature directly and see how they are part of your life now. Allow yourself to experience the love of a Hathor and the allies that you can take with you as you face the shadow in yourself and in your situation. With the ensuing magical resolution, you can stand with your humility before Wajet's towering power, Sagittarius. This is facing these deities, okay? Rising up and facing these deities right here, Sagittarius. Okay. Your allies. Says the shining star, Sothis generously pours her gifts upon our planet as Khonsu, the moon god, travels the sky, reflecting for us the faces and phases of our own divinity and Amun Ra. The radiance of the sun's all seeing eye transfigures ourselves and our creations into alchemical gold of enlightened being. If you've chosen this card, focus upon the images of the star, the sun, and the moon. Notice how they combined. How these combined of the natural and foods in your daily life experience with their potent gifts and power. With their attributes brought to the fore of your consciousness, you will see clearly how, when, and where you are, as Anubis are moving forward appropriately in your personal world, and your actions reflect on your planet. Okay, Sagittarius, connecting with that of the star, the moon, and the sky. You know, you know we were talking about star seeds earlier. Connecting back with that, connecting back with these deities. This is what you are connecting with. It's asking you, what are you trying to renew? What are you trying to bring, bring forward as well? Okay. But connecting with these deities as well, Sagittarius. So let's get some rings and some charms for yourself. So we have Thoth. We have the Subsidian, which is a protective stone. Of the rose, rose is important for the heart chakra. We were talking about opening your heart up, Sagittarius. You're rushing into the strength, and this is like successful. That you haven't, like I said, there's something successful here. You completed the journey. Now you're moving up, connecting with these beings here, making those offerings, Sagittarius, and it's bringing forth. Like there's something here you've already manifested through the mind, and you're gonna be able. You're gonna be bringing it into your actual reality and there's something here you're trying to renew whatever that may be so that's all i have for you and like i said first link in the description down below for personal reading and also go to my etsy shop go in there go buy something and i appreciate that and if you want to see more content don't forget to like subscribe bye guys